I don't think a lot of people understand how addiction works or what addiction feels like. And if you're somebody who knows someone who's currently struggling with addiction, or if you yourself are currently struggling with a substance use order, like I once did to nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content, things that our programs now help people quit, check out the pinned comment and links in the video description to learn more. I want to try and verbalize what that looks like and what that feels like in today's video. I mean, I'm going to do that by telling a, a, a fictional story. So let's pretend that you are preparing to go on a road trip to visit your family who lives on the other side of the country, okay? And you have a car, and this car is, it's nice. It's like, okay, it's, it's good enough. Like the seats are a little older, the air conditioning is a little spotty, the radio sort of works in and out, car's dirty, but like it works. It can get you across the country. And here you are, you pack up all your stuff and you get in the car and off you go. And you're maybe, you know, a few hours into your ride and you're like really bored. You're kind of looking around your car and it's a little depressing because you're like, God, I wish I had a better car. I wish things were a little different. I wish I had some company, you say to yourself. That would make this ride more interesting. And you see someone on the side of the road. And let's say this person goes by Nick, N-I-C, which is short for their full name, Nicotine, Okay. And they're hitchhiking, like they got their thumb up, they want to hitchhike. And you you pull over against your better judgment, you know you shouldn't be picking up hitchhikers, but against your better judgment, you're like, I just want to see where this, where this person's going. So you're like, hey, buddy, my name's, you know, Frank, uh, you're, what's your name? And he says, my name is Nick. And you say, where, where are you headed to? And Nick immediately replies with, well, I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm going the same place you are based on the fact that you're driving down this road. Where are you going? And you respond. You say, I'm going from New York to California. And Nick is like, great. I was actually headed to California too. Would you mind if I got a ride with you? And you look at Nick and you're like, ah, you know, I, I did pull over against my better judgment. But yeah, you know what? Screw it. Hop in the back seat of the car as long as you sit in the back because I don't want I don't let strangers sit up front with me, especially someone I don't know at all. How about you just sit in the back and 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 yeah, you can come with me. Great. So you pick up Nick and you're on your way. And things things actually seem to be a little bit better now. You have some conversation, you don't seem to be as bored, the mood in the car ride is all around a little bit lighter after some of that maybe initial Attention, getting to know Nick, short for nicotine. And uh, things are good. You're, you're happy. You're cruising right along. And you keep driving and you see another hitchhiker along the way. And this, this hitchhiker goes by THC for short or Mary Jane. We'll call, we'll call her Mary Jane, okay? And you're like, you know, I got one and this is kind of fun. And Nick is like, hey, another hitchhiker, another hitchhiker. Why don't you pull over? Pull over. And pick up Mary Jane, okay? Like just just pull over and 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 let's let's pick that person up too. You got room in your back seat. You got three seats back here. Why not help? Why not get them in the car? So you pull over. Mary Jane, maybe a little little shadier looking than Nick, uh, but she's cute, you know. So you're gonna pick her up, and you're like, okay, where are you going? And Mary Jane's like, I'm headed that way. Where are you going? And you're like, well, I'm going to California. And Mary Jane is like, awesome. So am I. I would love to get a ride with you guys. And again, against your better judgment, you're like, well, if you're going the same direction I am, I suppose you could sit in the back seat, but you got to promise me something. You got to promise me something. Um, would you be okay with getting out of the car at any point? Like, and, and Nick, I'm talking to you too, because now, you know, I got two hitchhikers in the car. You guys got to promise me that if I ask you to leave, that you'll leave, okay? And Nick looks at you, Mary Jane looks at you, and they say, yeah, of course, just, just tell us to get out, and we'll get out. We really appreciate you bringing us along for the ride, of course. Whatever you want, whatever you want, Frank, be happy to. All right, deal. You shake on it, Mary Jane gets in the back seat with Nick, and you're off. Conversation continues to go well, um, and you're driving along, and suddenly Nick and Mary Jane, they're like, you know, we're hungry, we haven't eaten in a while. We haven't stopped for food. Do you mind stopping to get us food? 
then you're like, that's kind of odd. They're not like necessarily offering to pay for the food, but they're asking me to stop. Okay. Yeah, I'll stop and get you guys food. And you know, now that I come to think of it, they haven't really given any money for gas either. And we've been driving for a long time now, a long time. And they're not pitching in. So now you're kind of frustrated a little bit. You're like, damn, you know, they're costing me money and food and they're Nick and Mary Jane are costing me money and gas and they're not really pitching in. But whatever. I'm at least I'm not bored. They're keeping me company. They've certainly made this car ride a lot more interesting because you know my radio's spotty out here as I'm driving through some of these hills and mountainous areas. Um, whatever, I don't care. I'll just I'll just deal with it. Whatever. You get them food. Everyone's happy again. Everyone's enjoying themselves. Now you're driving along, and Mary Jane says, "Hey, I have a friend I need you to pick up. I think uh, I I think it'd be best if we took a detour." And you're like a detour. Look, I really got to get to visit my family. They're expecting me. And Mary Jane says, no, 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 no. I need you to take a detour. We have to pick up my friend or I'm going to get out of the car. And you're like, well, um, okay, I guess if it's not that far out of the way, sure, I'll, I'll check it out. So you go down the detour road and now you're kind of, now you are out of your way. It's further out of your way than you expected it to be. But you've already committed now to Mary Jane and you already committed that you were going to go pick up her friend. And her friend goes by Elk, A-L-C, Alcohol is the full name, okay? And this is a shady looking character. You're not super comfortable about this person. And you see the friend and you're like, okay, Mary Jane, here's your friend. What do you want to do? And she's like, pick him up. He needs a ride. He's going to California as well with us. And you have enough room. You have a third seat in your back seat. Can't you give him a ride? And you're like, look, I don't know. I'm really getting uncomfortable about this. And then Nick and Mary Jane say, fine, then we're both going to leave. We're going to get out of the car right now. You can find your way back off the detour and you can go on about your lonesome self on your drive to California in your mediocre vehicle. Have fun, buddy. And you're like, damn, <sighs> I am, I am, I think I'm enjoying myself more with you guys. Fine, whatever, screw it, alcohol, get in. Have a seat, sit in the back, just like everyone else. Here's the deal, if I ask you to get out of my car, you have to get out, okay? Alcohol, shake on it. Yep, I'll shake on it. All you got to do is ask. I'm in the back seat with them. Great, no problem. Now you're driving along and alcohol kind of says, he's like, you know what? I don't like the temperature in here. I don't like the music that you're listening to. Then nicotine chimes in, Nick chimes in. Hmm, I don't like it. Do you mind changing the station? Do you mind changing the temperature? And you're thinking, what the heck? This is my car. Who are these, who are these guests in my house? telling me what to do, telling me how to operate, telling me how to how to do this. I'm feeding them. I'm spending money on them. I picked up their friends along the way. And what? For some conversation and now they're going to tell me what to put on the radio and tell me what temperature to keep the car? No, 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 no. But you don't. You don't speak up. No, no, no. Instead, you do. You change the radio station and you accommodate the temperature to nicotine's liking. Okay? You're driving along and all of a sudden, alcohol says, I don't like the way that you're driving. And you're, what? What are you talking about? I don't like how you drive. You drive too slow. How about I come sit up front and at least guide you along the way? I'm kind of tired of staying in the back. I'd prefer to sit up front. I can get us there faster. And you're like, look, I don't want you saying up front. Alcohol says, fine, I'll get out of the car. You say, fine, come sit up front. I guess it's not that big of a deal as long as Mary Jane and Nick are still in the back or whatever. So now alcohol's sitting up front with you. And now the tone is dramatically changing in the car. You're uncomfortable. You're taking directions from someone that you don't even know and you don't even know why you're doing it. And now there's one more stop along the way. They have one more friend they want to pick up, and that friend is gambling. It's adult media content. It's pills. It's Perk 30s. It's Benzos. It's whatever it is. One more friend they want to pick up along the way, and you do. You pick up that friend. You, you take directions just, just as, as they tell you to do, and now suddenly the environment in the vehicle's changed. You're no longer in control of your vehicle. In fact, come to think of it, you don't even know where you're going anymore. 
It started off as a road trip to go visit your family that you were excited about. And now you're scared. And now you're in a car with four or five strangers that you don't know anymore. And suddenly one of them, you quickly come to realize, they're driving the vehicle. You've now taken a back seat. And you didn't even see it coming. Now here's the catch. You made a deal with each of these people in your vehicle that they would get out. All you have to do is tell them. All you have to do is ask. They're not going to put up much more of a fight than you think. They might complain. They might whine a little bit. They might try and tell you, hey, we're buddies. Hey, didn't we make the ride more fun? Didn't we do this? But at the end of the day, if you put your foot down and you ask them to leave your vehicle, they will exit. They will get out. But it's on you to make that choice. It's on you to make that decision. It's on you to put your foot down. And I understand that it might be one verse three, one verse four, one verse five. I understand. But you have to get to where you're going. Because there's people that want to see you. There's a future ahead of you that looks very, very different from the path that these guests are trying to take you down. And guess what? That mediocre car, once you kick them out, you're going to quickly realize something. You could fix it up. You could clean it up. You could change a few things in it. And you could get a really, really great ride on the way back. On the way back when you got to head back home after this road trip. But it's on you to make that decision, to make that call, to make that choice. Okay? I understand it's hard. Now, it doesn't have to be. We got programs. I got one-on-one coaching programs. We have our addiction mindset group coaching school community. Okay. You can join that 27 bucks a month. I interact with you directly helping you overcome addictions. Okay. We have products and supplements designed to help you quit deep breathing necklaces. We have chewing gum products designed with cannabis free, nicotine free, stimulant free, KSM 66 and ashwagandha right here on YouTube Shopping. And then I have a 90-page workbook that re re encaps this story that I just told you guys, among with a bunch of other tips on how to quit and things like that. And it's totally free. I don't even charge you for that. So I would recommend going to the pinned comment or the video description, checking out the links there and downloading or getting involved in one of those resources. And if you don't want to do that, just watch a few more videos that I put right here because I'm going to try my best to help get you in that place mentally to tell those unwanted guests to get out of the car. Until next time.